Hi, I'm Peter White from the IBM. We're at IBC uh, 2018 show, and I ha have with me here Guido Miardi from Thanks. Vinova. Yep. Um, Guido, we saw this morning in the uh, conference session the immense pressure now that the, the, the media companies are coming under for, for efficiency and speed. We also saw the, the uptake of OTT, where really strong um, growth in that area and also high levels of quality. How, how's Vinova playing in this particular part? We love it. Thank you, Peter, because, of course, when I, when I was listening this morning, I, I was giggling because we are all about providing more quality, more options, uh, and, uh, and making digital experiences come alive. And OTT is a phenomenal way to open up new channels and new opportunities for people, more options, more choice. And finally, we're seeing it coming, becoming real, and not just for VOD and films and TV shows, which is great what we've seen with Netflix and Amazon in the past and others, but now we are seeing massive investment, billions being put into acquiring uh, content rights for sports, which is the core yes. <laughs> of entertainment and video entertainment, as we know, is like, you know, sports, uh, live uh, uh, entertainment is uh, is the backbone of mm. what uh, what people like to watch, and we are seeing ambitious uh, deployments. Uh, we are also seeing the challenges, though, because we've mm. seen problems in Australia. We've seen problems in, during the World Cup. We've seen problems yes. at uh, the Tennis Open. Uh, 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 we've seen problems in my mother country, Italy, where a very ambitious acquisition of exclusivity rights, uh, yes. you know, ended up in problematic uh, yeah. uh, intensity uh, of traffic and. And um, I think it's a great moment for the industry because what this is demonstrating is that it's really possible and it's great. At the same time, where we play as a company, we are a very important uh, foundational element to make it possible because mm. uh, I'm extremely proud, for instance, that one of our landmark uh, deployments is uh, Sky over IP. Sky is making history in the entire planet uh, mm. because of the fact that they launched an OTT unmanaged network service uh, which is 100% the full-fledged uh, sky quality uh, full HD experience for everybody via mm. unmanaged mm. OTT at full price mm. and it's working great uh, and it runs on Perseus <laughs> I'm which particularly is, proud yeah. and in the same country same network we're seeing other operators having problems because yeah. if you don't use technology in the, in the best possible way, of yeah. course, uh, uh, you, you encounter problems. So we are working a lot also with our CDN partners in mm -hmm. order to make sure that we have the best combination of compression, CDN, to deliver top quality experiences to more people mm -hmm. at lower cost because efficiency is important. Yeah. So at the same time, we need to reduce encoding costs, reduce transmission costs, uh, and give a better quality mm -hmm. service. So how, how do you go about reducing the costs of with uh, uh, processing efficiency at transcoding. Uh -huh. So essentially, the importance of what we've been doing is making sure, first of all, that with a single workflow, you can serve 100% of devices. So without right. replicating workflows, because if you start needing different codecs uh, for different devices, yeah. then you need to replicate everything. So more headends, yeah. more, more costs. Yeah. And so, you know, by having one next generation codec that can serve them all, you can just do one, uh, Mm. One, you encode once and you serve everybody. Yeah. Then that encode that takes about half of the least processing intensive alternative. So, you know, essentially you reduce the number of devices that are necessary for a certain number of channels, which is especially important if you're going to cloud based services, etc. You know, you, it makes for a lot of OPEX efficiency. Mm or you know, CAPEX efficiency and space if you are in a more traditional uh, uh, on-premise environment. Then of course delivery. Delivery is a matter of delivery costs, uh, but it's also a matter of bottlenecks. If you start mm. uh, having to serve millions of people at the same time, you're talking terabits very easily, or yes. tens of terabits. Yes. And when you talk terabits or tens of terabits, it gets messy. Not, yeah. It's not a, a last mile problem, it's a backbone problem, it's a CDN problem. So we lower the amount of terabits by a factor of three, Right. which not necessarily by itself solves the problem, but of course it offloads a lot of pressure. Yes. Eases uh, the flow a bit. Eases the flow a bit, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But then people need to use uh, top quality video delivery networks, so it's also about how you think about the CDN, how you know this mm. content is delivered. 
And then at the end device, it's really compatibility. It's really making sure that everybody can get uh, the top quality that you're delivering without leaving anybody behind. It's not just who bought the latest yeah. and greatest device, but it's really at scale services mm. to everybody. What happens when you know you get announcements like Apple saying they're going to deliver, you know, provide HDR on their things? Does that have a challenge? Pr provide a challenge for you guys? Or? Well, HDR, I'm, a, I'm a, you know a very big supporter because it adds quality, and mm. you know we're all about top quality. HDR in particular for us is transparent. You know, it's a, it's a, a sort of technically speaking orthogonal, independent, mm. complementary. Uh, element, so mm. you know, we're very happy if people are going HDR because it means they're they are thinking about increasing the quality. Yeah. So quality, of course, is a matter of resolution. It's a matter of HDR. It's a matter of sound. It yes. has nothing to do with us, but of yeah. course, you know, we want, for instance, to reduce the bitrate of video so that you can give a better, better sound, <laughs> sound yeah. to people. It makes sense uh, because you know, also that uh, yeah. is important, and HDR yeah. is one of those components. So mm. uh, you know, of course. Uh, uh, combining the best experience means combining the best video and, yeah. and, and also the best ancillary yeah. components. Yeah. One okay. of the things that we are showing here at IBC, for instance, is also UI, uh, which you know a lot of people think that uh, we are a video company only. In yeah. reality, we are a data compression company, and we are showing how Perseus, our technology, allows to triple, quadruple the speed of reaction of a user interface uh, because images come to you, you know, you can use persons to compress yeah. images, they come to you much faster and it becomes instantaneous. And so, you know, if you are navigating or browsing a catalog of videos, you know, in a, or, or you know, essentially figuring, yeah. it becomes makes, much faster. Makes sense. I saw, I saw something the other day that we've actually now got the attention span that's less than a goldfish <laughs> when it comes to uh, viewing video we like you know goldfish is something like six seconds exactly. and we like two and if it's not there instantaneously we move exactly. so that's a really re you really need, strong we need benefit. to get to the hundred millisecond level yeah uh, and uh, if even half a second or more to receive an image yeah. not enough the quality of experience is mm. impatience yeah impatient. yeah we're all impatient yeah. exactly when it's a fast moving world and you think yeah. the new and the younger viewers they 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 take their content as and when they want in bite-sized chunks and you know, I think to have the technology to deliver it at speed with a good user interface experience, I think is important. Yeah. yeah. Reaction times are fundamental. You know, everybody is talking about the challenge of OTT in latency. Latency is like buffering at the be beginning, you know, video yeah. startup time. It's, of course, latency uh, in like, uh, you know, all the chain yeah. latency, which is driven by if you need to put a lot of buffering, of course, you know, you're building up latency. So it's very important that we work to solve those problems and actually a key element to work on those problems is of course reducing the amount of data that you need yes. to deliver to yes. people so that you can take more risks, you can shorten the chunks, yeah. which reduces latency, mm. it reduces video startup time, it reduces mm -hmm. essentially all this lag that makes people switch off sometimes. Okay. So lost business. Obviously look you're looking forward to a good IBC. What what kind of um Developments? Do you think you'll be seeing, and what kind of you know, problems for, will you be solving? For us, essentially, we operate uh, across the whole chain. What we're mm. showing here at IBC is how, for top quality contribution, uh, we are massively reducing the cost of equipment. Uh, you know, cost per channel goes down by roughly a factor of three. At the same time, bandwidth for ultra HD or remote production can go down by a factor of four. So lots of efficiency and enablement uh, yeah. of remote production and ultra HD in places where maybe you don't have as much bandwidth. And um, cannot announce it uh, specifically, but there were more than 100 million people in the last month uh, watching sports events, primary sports events, uh, where contribution were running through Perseus. You know, Excellent. fortunately, some people sometimes ask me, "Aren't you doing something?" You know, we cannot announce everything that we do, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, but this is actually a key part to enable yeah. top quality. But also, we are working on primary distribution as well. What we've done in Asia with Measat, we put live. Um, channels in Ultra HD at 8 megabits instead of 24, 25. 8 is actually a key number because, you know, with transponders, of course, the capacity, it needs mm. to be multiple of certain numbers. And so it allows a number of channels that previously was completely impossible yeah. and makes the business case for Ultra HD remote, uh, primary distribution. So, you know, we are trying to push a lot this chain of Ultra HD so that it's more possible for affiliates to receive uh, Ultra HD feeds and then offer to end uh, customers uh, Ultra HD channels to end customers the possibility to 
broadcast uh, supports Ultra HD, so high frame rate Ultra HD below 10 megabits means the possibility for more people to access those top quality services. For people that don't have Ultra HD TVs, it's also about 1080p60 and 1080p50, yeah. Yeah. which is yeah. still great quality. Absolutely. Everybody can receive it. Every t television set, every mobile phone, every mm. tablet can see 1080p60. Currently, we couldn't transmit it because it would require more than six, eight megabits. With Persis, we can do it in two, three megabits, wow. which actually unlocks the possibility to actually do yeah. it. So, so it's really the pushing this quality across the chain and then the user experience yeah. uh, of imaging, you know, and getting also images, better quality images, larger images. We're showing, for instance, the concept of a UI that can start using very big images because you can get them very quickly. Yes, very quickly. And, uh, yeah, and so, you know, it's possible to also start thinking more creatively about user experience also yeah, from yeah. the point yeah. of unlocks view of a lot, Unlocks a lot of opportunities, doesn't it, when you can deliver something at a greater speed and yeah. greater efficiency. Yeah. We, were, we were talking um, today about how the, how the agility and the need to spin up a channel very quickly and that kind of thing. And I guess, again, with the with this kind of technology, it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Cloud, we're big fans of cloud because cloud yeah. really makes, makes it possible to spin up uh, not just a service. What we were discussing this morning is like an entire operation that can be spin, yeah. spin up very quickly, which is great, but also a same customer can spin up channels much more flexibly. So today you want 10 channels, but there is a special moment, you want 20 or 25, fine. You know, in the cloud you can go elastic and, uh, and start you that doing. flexibility. But yeah. of course, if you want to structure yourself, yourself for the cloud, uh, you need to start solving problems like, how do I contribute to the cloud? <laughs> because, yeah. you know, I need to get my content uh, yes. there. Yeah. Uh, how do I deliver from the cloud to lots and lots of people? So, you know, there are, you know, archival also, Another thing that we're showing here is also our integration for nonlinear editing uh, software, where finally people can start using Perseus also, especially now with our standardization efforts, also for archival. Which you know, of course, if you start, uh, uh, you know, having to move uh, uh, files, uh, you know, across, uh, you know, and you're not on premise, it's quite important yeah. that they're not huge. Exactly. 1.5 gigabits. Uh, yeah. Tough, you know, if it's 300 instead of 1.5 uh, uh, or, or 1,500, it starts it being uh, more feasible. More feasible, absolutely. So, obviously, um, we know we're doing extremely well, enjoying great success. Where do you think you'll be in five years' time? Scale is the name of the game. Right. <laughs> in the century, we spent a lot of time to productize uh, right. because, uh, you know, we've been uh, out of stealth for two and a half years, almost three years, no, three years now. And uh, I'm glad that everything that uh, I personally promised when we came out and a lot of people thought I was joking because I was defying gravity, etc. Now we proved it with actual deployments, uh, so not, not just lab tests, uh, yeah. but also deployments. Also lab tests, uh, because mm. you know, even for instance, MPEG has been doing lots mm. of tests uh, and yeah. confirming essentially uh, what, uh, what, uh, what we claimed. Now it's actually going from products and deployments uh, to scale, to allowing okay. more and more people, big and small, to access Persia. So for us, it's all about integration, 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 allowing people to, even per people like, you know, privates. You know, one thing is uh, it's possible and it will be increasingly possible for even single individuals to use Perseus with their own software or wow. using transcoding services that are easily available. So not just for a large operator, but also for, for much smaller yeah. people and enjoy the cost reductions, the possibilities of higher quality that it offers. So for us, it's really all about that and partnering as much as possible with yeah. third parties and vendors, because of course we cannot do everything and so we need uh, all of our beautiful partners, uh, yeah, uh, no, are, absolutely, uh, yeah, and, you know, encoder vendors and cloud platforms. You know, for instance, we are working extremely well with uh, uh, UCAST, our partner in the US, uh, where we are doing deployments in the US uh, using their platform and Microsoft Azure. Uh, we are working very well with AWS uh, services uh, and uh, you know other encoder vendors. You know, Imagine Communications, uh, where we have integrations. There is another major encoder vendor that we. We haven't announced yet, but no. we will announce Excellent. so soon uh, that uh, integrated our products. As, and so, you know, CDNs, I mentioned, you know, like mainstreaming. So mm. it's, it's all about partnering, 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 yeah. partnering and scale. I was asked this morning by IBC TV what would be my buzzword for, 
for this show and maybe you know the next year or two. And I think collaboration is the key, really. People working together. You know, broadcast companies don't really want to have just one end-to-end -end solution. They want to work with the best in the yeah. best in the market. And I think if you can yeah. work with other suppliers and work with end users, it's got to be good. And interoperability, compatibility. You yes. Know, that, you know, as you mentioned correctly, uh, most companies really want to start using modules that are interoperable, compatible. That's why we spend tons of time to build a technology that can really work yeah. seamlessly with everything because it's so key for people to be able to mm. plug and play, use it where it needs to be used and switch it off if it's necessary on some other things, but you know, mm. very easy to, to, to use. Great. Well, I can tell you're really passionate about <laughs> your business and the business of, yeah. uh, of, of broadcast and media technology. So I love what you said this morning, actually, because you said a very, very profound thing that uh, I always say, so I'm glad that I heard it from you and we didn't think before. This industry lived in a bubble and is discovering what is common practice yes. elsewhere. I, I lived my entire career in other industries. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> I, so essentially, when yeah. I came to this industry as a newbie, yeah. I was like, wow, wow you know? Yeah, wow, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, all these things, you know, I was yeah. leading, uh, you know, open but, innovation initiatives. But, and, but the great thing is yeah. that it's all been proven outside this exactly. industry, so the speed of catch up exactly. is, is blistering, really. Exactly. It's mind blowing. So, well, that's great. And uh, well, do we enjoy the show? And I'm sure we We'll have another one of these sessions at NAB or, or somewhere after. And uh, have a great show and thank you for, thank you. for coming. Um, I've been Peter White, IBM, and we've been talking to Guido Miardi of Vinova. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Peter.